Another form of distribution that we'll look at is the Poisson distribution, which is just an application of the population knowledge to predict our sample behavior. Now some characteristics of Poisson distribution begins with the fact that it deals with integers, which can take any value. It's used where the probability of success in each trial is very small and used for predicting the number of defects. It's used to analyze solutions wherein the number of trials is very large, and it describes the discrete data. So let's do an example of Poisson distribution. So we have some past records of a road junction, which is very accident prone. And it shows that the mean number of accidents every week is five at this junction. So let's assume that the number of accidents follows a Poisson distribution and calculate the probability of any number of accidents happen happening in a week. So to do that, we have to understand what the Poisson formula is. So to figure out what Poisson formula is, it looks like this. And it's to x, and then that, and then that, over this. All right, so that's the typical formula. But that looks Greek to me. I have no idea what all those things mean. So the first thing we have to understand is the probability. So the first thing is, is we have a probability of x, which is the probability of exactly the number of occurrences. So it's the number of occurrences in a Poisson distribution. So it looks sort of like this. So of course we have our first symbol, which is located here and here, and this is gonna be our mean. It's the mean of the number of occurrences during any interval. So the mean of the number of occurrences and C S uh, during an interval. All right, the next symbol, so that takes care of those symbols. The next symbol that we have is the, the asterisk or the star. And this is going to be equal to the number of occurrences that we desire. And then finally, we have the lowercase e, which is our base natural logarithm. Now, with the natural logarithm, it always stays the same. And it's 2.71828. So now we just plug and play. So now that we know what all of these symbols mean, we just start adding them to our particular case. So let me wipe that away and let's fill out our Poisson thing. So first off, so P stands for Poisson. But so let's say that now there's no probability or let's now let's say that the probability of zero accidents happening per week. So our Poisson of zero, right? There's our equal sign. This is zero, right? So it's going to be this. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to have five, right? Because that's our mean. We're looking for five. Uh, we know that there's an average of five accidents at this particular uh, intersection or this junction per week. So we have our mean. Remember, that's our symbol like that. So we have our mean x, right? Because that's how it's going to go. Well, at that point, now we have to have our we have to have our star, right? And then we put our e there, which is going to be our base natural logarithm of 2.71828. So we know what the e stands for, and then we're going to put minus five, because if you remember going back to our um, our um, original formula, this is what it looks like, right? So it comes in here, and that's going to equal our mean x uh, multiplied by our e and then minus our mean and then we're going to subtract that over that. So this is what we're trying to fill in. So we're going to make this look like that. So then when we have that we can just go ahead and put our dividing line in place 
and then we're going to put zero because that's our uh, that's that's the uh, the actions on this particular week. So zero, and then our exclamation point brings us there. So we're going to type this into an all of, into a graphing calculator, and that's going to be point uh, zero zero six. So there's a point zero zero six percent probability that zero accidents will happen per week. Well, now we can continue to do the exact same thing over and over again, right? So now we just kind of change out these numbers a little bit. So now what we're looking for is maybe on the question is, is what's the probability of exactly one accident happening per week? So we do the same thing, right? So we take the zero out, we put a one there. So we already know that. These numbers are going to stay the same because we're still looking at the, at the average Remember, our mean, our average, is still 5, so those numbers stay the same. And then we'll just switch out the 1 there. We do that calculation, and now what happens is now it comes to 0.03%. So the probability of exactly one accident per week happening would be 0.03%. But now we want to know the probability of more than two accidents happening per week. Well, now it's going to be a little bit different, right? We we're going to have to start calculating out this over and over and over and over again. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a 1, right? Because that's where we're going to start. We have to start with 1 because we're looking at more than two accidents per week. And then we're going to start just applying our principle. So it's going to be a bracket, and then we're going to put a P, and then we're going to look at zero, because remember, we're starting at week zero, right? There's zero accidents per week. That was the first calculation. And then we have to come in here, and we have to now do one. So that's one accident per week. And then we're going to go do uh, two, because we're looking for two accidents per week. So we have zero accidents per week, one accident per week, and two accidents per week. So now what that's going to equal, then, is that's where I'm going to bring it down here. So what that's going to equal then is 1, because that's what we're looking at in terms of that. And now we know, because we're going to be subtracting, that the probability of zero accidents happening per week, if we recall, was 0 0.006, right? So we know that. And then we're going to add what our P1 was, which was 0 0.03. And then we're going to calculate what it would be for two weeks. So we'll go back to our other one, and that's actually 0 0.08, and then we're going to close our parentheses because we're looking at two weeks. So we know the probability of no accidents happening per week, we know the probability of one accident happening per week, and we know the probability of two accidents happening per week. And this is going to equal, by the time we get all done, uh, 0.884. Um, if I'm using my calculator correctly. Right? So it's 88.4%. So the probability of more than two accidents happening per week is 88.4%. So we're doing that Poisson formula multiple times to get our answers. And that's how you would manually do a Poisson distribution.